Good morning. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Good morning. Uh, we are going to start today with a series of presentations on research, statistics, and epidemiology. And the name of the course is Research Forum Essentials in Clinical Research. We are planning to meet here once a month, a second Monday of the month, to discuss different topics. What we have uh, learned through the years is this is one of the weaknesses that we have all across the board. It's very difficult to, for us to know statistics, epidemiology, and I think that this is going to be very helpful both to learn, to help us to eventually uh, be more critical with the information that we read, and also for those that participate in research directly to have better understanding on how to develop protocols. This uh, actually has taken a lot of effort to put together, believe it or not, and the uh, people that I'd like to thank are Dr. Lara Dingra, who, who has put incredible amount of time to put this together, Elena Knotkova, Patricia Friedman, Dr. Peter Hommel here next to me, Lois Grossman from CME, Kristen Glaxon smith from CME as well, Gail Cantor from GME, Dr. Don de Gerlet, Dr. Portnoy, who is sitting here with us. Uh, I'd like also to acknowledge contribution by Jack, who is sitting outside, Jack Chan, and some of the volunteers that are helping up with this today. This is also being transferred live to uh, St. Louis Roosevelt, and, uh, and uh, so I think that we are going to get started. The, the idea is uh, also please make sure that you sign in because uh, you need to, in order to get CME credits, you have to sign in, and then when you leave, you have to fill the uh, evaluation form. If you are at St. Luke's Roosevelt, then you do that by email. You should have received already the evaluations, so we should be all set. Dr. Peter Hommel is the Director of Biostatistics for the Department of Pain Medicine and Palliative Care at Beth Israel Medical Center and Co-Director of, of Research for the Continuum Center for Health and Healing. He is responsible for designing and analyzing clinical research projects in several clinical areas, including pain, oncology, intensive care, complementary medicine as well. He has a PhD in experimental cognitive psychology from NYU and an MS in statistics, statistics from CUNY. He's a co-author on more than 90 peer-reviewed publications. His particular research interest involves projects measuring distress in care grievers of chronically ill patients and complementary medicine interventions for inpatient cancer care. He is currently also collaborating with the VA hospital in East Orange, where he is involved in projects aimed at characterizing and treating post-traumatic stress disorder in veterans. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. So, I'm more, I'm, um, uh, okay, can you hear me? Okay. So I'm uh, laboring under a, a sore throat, so like, bear with me. So anyway, uh, the topic today is going to be um, tests of mean differences and overview. Um, I had to make a slight correction. So um, basically, we're going to be talking about how do you compare uh, groups of, you know, uh, group means. So group A has um, its average age is whatever. Group B, you know, you want to have some way or of comparing those two groups. So that's what we'll be going through today. Um, outline of topics, um, some basic introduction about uh, samples, statistical tests, and what p-values are. Uh, then we'll talk about uh, the t-tests for uncorrelated samples, t-tests for correlated samples, and we'll go into analysis of variance. And so analysis of variance is like this, you know, one step up from um, t-tests. So uh, we'll talk about simple non-repeated measures, uh, um, um, non-repeated measures analysis of variance, otherwise known as ANOVA. And also we'll talk a little bit about post-hoc tests. Uh, repeated measures ANOVA, um, and then we'll talk about problems with um, uh, repeated measures ANOVA, a little bit about non-parametric tests, and then finally, um, we'll t probably touch just on like uh, latest developments of, um, in terms of comparing mean differences, and so those are things, um, uh, we'll touch a little bit on mixed model regression and generalized linear modeling. Okay. So what let me say is that if you have questions, feel free to ask. Um, we're we're going to allow for about five or ten minutes at the end for like uh, really big questions. Okay? And let me also add that this is a presentation. I'm not expecting to teach you statistics. What I'm hoping to do is help you understand statistics, some of the rationale behind doing tests of mean differences, and um, um, 
really more as a uh, preparation for people who need to, say, uh, present for a journal club, need to analyze an article. Uh, so you basically you have an understanding of what the statistics mean, uh, what a p-value is, and things like that. Okay, I'm not expecting any deep uh, um, knowledge to come out of this. Um, medical research. When we do medical research, we're interested in patient outcomes. And in particular, well, you know, an example, um, since I'm in pain medicine and also um, since I'm going around on, the c on a cane, I, I'm intimately um, familiar with pain. Um, basically, uh, we could do a, a clinical trial of some analgesics, some pain medication, and we'd have, um, um, we'd have two groups, and um, let's say one group gets the active medication, the other group gets a placebo or a non-active uh, drug. Basically, we want to see whether there's uh, a lowering of the amount of pain in the, the, in the group that gets the active drug. Um, so we typically would have a scale, for, say, from 0 to 10, and we'd ask the patients in each group, what's your level of pain on a, on a, uh, on a, uh, on a scale from 0 to 10? And so eventually we'd have two groups of, um, of um, uh, uh, pain measurements, and we'd like to look at the mean for the active group versus the mean for the placebo group and see whether or not the active group has a, a lower mean than the placebo group. So basically we want to have some way of comparing um, two sets of measurements or two sets uh, that uh, we have means for. Okay. Whenever we do research, typically we do, uh, we work with samples rather than populations. And the reason for that is practicality. Samples are smaller, they're easy to obtain. Um, we can't, you know, we, w we just had the um, 2010 uh, census and um, Basically, you don't want to have to go through all the, uh, the mess that the uh, U.S. government has to do every 10 years. Um, we want to be able to make judgments about populations based on the sample. So even though we haven't measured the entire sample, we want to be able to say that um, the sample of patients who got the active drug got relief. And so they represent the population of all possible patients who would get that medication, and those uh, those people in that population would also get relief. That's the basic idea of doing um, sample t statistics like this. We want to be able to make judgments about the larger population, about all patients who who, uh, who are represented by that sample. A statistical test. Um, we'll see one in a, a minute, but basically. Uh, I'd say all statistical tests of differences between means consist of two parts. One is the numerator, the top part above the um, division sign, and that's basically a, measurement, uh, a measure of how far the groups are from one another. So how far apart are the means of the two groups in, a t in the case of a t-test or three or, or more, more groups in the case of an, uh, an analysis of variance. The bottom or the denominator, the, in other words, the, the thing below the uh, division sign, basically measures how much overlap, how much messiness um, there is I in terms of your data. How, how much do your groups overlap? So we'll, uh, we'll get a better idea of what that is in a moment. And based on the statistical test, we want to calculate a p-value, a probability, of how big that difference would be if they originally came from a population where there were no differences between those two groups. In other words, let's say we, we have a clinical uh, trial we take two groups, we randomly sample, or actually we sample from a population that's the same for both groups. And so there shouldn't be any difference between those groups in s unless we've done something, um, i.e. that active drug actually induces some sort of relief in those patients who got the active drug. So in other words, what you've done is you've, you've made them into a kind of a different population. And so what we want to do is see what the, the p-value is, what the probability of getting that difference after you um, give the active drug versus the placebo in, um, uh, in two groups that presumably came from the same population. Okay? And that's basically what a p-value is. It's like um, we have an event, we, have, we can figure out what the probability is just as much as we can figure out the probability of getting two heads in, um, if we toss a coin twice. Okay. Randomized clinical trials, as I said before, um, one of the things about randomization uh, and random assignment is that it, it ensures that there should be no difference between your groups before you do any kind of intervention. And that's simply because you're taking two samples from the same population, so they shouldn't be different. Then you give one group an active treatment, the other one a placebo. 
what we hope to, especially the, uh, sort of the company that's paying you good money to, to do, do this piece of research, you want to see some sort of difference, especially they want to see some difference. And the bigger the difference is, I, uh, the more or the more likely we are able to say that there is a real or a, a meaningful or significant difference between those two groups, which basically translates into the idea that that drug is effective. So again, probability, probability ranges from zero to one, and so um, the p-value, again, is the probability of getting a test difference based on the assumption that the samples came from the same population. A small p-value, so a p-value that's close to zero, says it's pretty likely, I'm um, sorry, a, a small p-value means that the samples, um, means that there's a small probability that the samples came from the same population. So the, lo the smaller the probability, the less likely it is that those two samples came from the same population. And the higher the p-value, the more likely they came from the same population. And what we'll see is that there's, um, there's a point of no return. There's a point where the, the, the probability of the p-value is so small that we say these two groups couldn't have come from the same population or they don't represent the same population anymore. And so basically in medicine and most of the social sciences, a, a, a significance level of uh, 0 0.05 is taken as the point of no return. So in other words, if your p-value is less than 0 0.05, then you, ha you say that um, there's a significant difference between your two groups, and so you, s you then conclude that they, they don't come from the same population anymore, and you say, all right, um, the final conclusion is that in the case of a medication, your medication is uh, showing a significant difference. It's basically it's showing eff uh, it's, it's effective in lowering pain or improving quality of life or whatever you're testing. Well, yeah, the, it's like originally they, they, they were taken from the same population. So basically, if there were the drug didn't do any good, then you'd, ex you'd expect that there would be no, not either no difference or a very small difference. In effect, what you've done is in one, I, you, since you've administered an act, the, the active drug and you've caused a change in the group that got the active drug, in a certain presto change, you, you got what would amount to a new population. Sure. Okay. So here's the t test for independent sample mean. So this is a situation where we have two groups, um, say placebo and an active group. And the top part, we have the, the average or the mean for each of the groups. And then in the um, uh, denominator, we've got the um, this term that measures how much overlap there is between the two groups. Basically, it consists of the standard deviation squared for each group, which is otherwise known as the variance. And I try not to put too much jargon into this. And that y that's divided by n, and then you have the square root of that. Basically, just understand that that bottom part, the denominator, is just measuring how much overlap there is between your groups. I'm going to go back to it a couple of times, but let's say. Um, One thing I'll say is that if you look up this, the, the formula for a, a two-group t-test, you're going to see slightly different versions. And the reason for that is that this one that I picked is probably the simplest one around. And it's specifically for the situation where you've got two groups that have the same uh, n size, the same number of people in each group. And also, uh, it's for a situation where you have the, the same size standard deviation in each group. The, the, same, the amount of overlap or the amount of uh, range in both of the groups is pretty much equivalent. And I was just kind of curious, does anyone know why it's called a student t-test? 